Light and shadow healing or damage. The priest is a class you'll always find at the core of raid groups or at high rating in PvP, and you better believe that is not about to change in Cataclysm either. With tons of talent changes, iconic new abilities, and overall some more engaging gameplay, the priest remains a top pick this expansion. There's going to be far more to discipline than just mashing power word shield, Holy gets to empower single targets or raid heals, and Shadow starts to blast on DPS meters. You'll also get a bunch more choices for race when it comes to Priest. Both Worgen and Goblin can roll as this class, as can Gnome and Tauren. So let's make a start and check out what's changed with the Priest in Cataclysm, and see how good they were back then. But first a quick word from today's sponsor, Factor 75. Factor 75 make delicious food that's delivered straight to your doorstep. These meals are calorie counted and the weekly menu has over 30 varied options ranging from keto calorie smart to vegan vegetarian and loads more so whatever your dietary needs or preferences are, there should be something for everyone. Factor 75 also ensures you stay organised as you'll know what is going to be in the fridge, and there'll be no need to go back to ordering out instead, which can both help you stick to a new regime or just eat better in general. However, the biggest benefit has to be the minimal time spent in the kitchen, as each meal is ready in about two or so minutes. It's microwavable food, but just not in a way that you've seen it before. And I've got a pretty big dis Discount, so why not give them a try? You can go to our link and get 50% off your first Factor 75 box, plus free wellness shots for life. That'll be two free wellness shots per order with an active subscription. Many thanks to Factor 75 for the sponsor today. Let's get back to WoW. Up first, we're checking out our baseline changes to each spec. So up in the Discipline tree, Inner Fire now lasts forever and increases armor by 60% in addition to giving spell power. A nice general change here if you ever forget to buff this, or in PvP for example when you're being focused and maybe don't always have the global to refresh it. Dispel Magic will now only remove one effect from enemies by default, to down from two, and new to Discipline is Inner Will. This is exclusive with Inner Fire and reduces the cost of instant cast spells by 15% and increases movement speed by 10%. Over in the Holy Tree, the general healing rework that's affected all healers is of course here. Heal is now your slow and efficient minor heal, greater heal is your slow and efficient big heal, and flash heal is your fast and inefficient big heal. New to Holy is going to be a crowd favourite priest ability, Leap of Faith, or Life Grip, whichever one you want to call it. A one and a half minute cooldown to instantly move a target to your position. This is a very high skill expression ability. You can pull off all kinds of saves with this, from getting somebody out of a bad spot in PvP, to preventing someone from being knocked off a ledge or out of a mechanic in PvE, or anything in between. On the Shadow Tree, Shadow of Death now deals three times damage to targets below 25% health and still causes damage back to the priest if the target doesn't die. Mind Seer can now be channeled on allies, which is a great bit of quality of life. You can now just Mind Seer off the tank instead of having to try and tab between enemies, and in PvP you can tab on your ally when looking for that enemy rogue. This also makes Mind Seer much better at dealing with very low health enemies too. New for Shadow is Mind Spike. This ability does damage to a target and increases the crit chance of Mind Blast by 30%, stacking 3 times. However, in Kata, unlike Season of Discovery, using this ability also removes damage over time effects from the target. The point of this ability is to give priests something to use on targets which aren't going to live for a very long time, or to allow fast target switching in PvP. So overall your priest baseline toolkit is pretty familiar to what you have in Wrath, but it's the talent trees where things are going to change. When you pick Holy you get Holy Word Chastise, which at face value is just basically a PvP ability, but there is a talent to modify it to make it into a healer tool as we will see in a moment. You also get 15% bonus to all healing effects, 50% of mana regen from spirit continues in combat, and your dispel magic will remove two effects when used on allies. Your mastery is Echo of Light, causing your direct heals to also place a heal over time on the target for a percentage of the initial amount healed. In the talent tree, we've got quite a few changes here. Renew gains several separate talents dedicated into making it better, including just healing more, giving it an instant heal point, portion and its GCD being lowered. Lightwell is still in the game and can contribute some heals to your raid, but the big addition we have for Holy is Chakra. 
Cataclysm is the expansion where the Holy Priest gets to choose a healing style from fight to fight, so they always have the tools they need to deal with whatever's incoming. When activated, your next single target heal will cause you to enter Chakra Serenity, which increases the crit chance of direct healing spells by 10% and causes them to refresh for new on a target. Your Holy Word Chastise will also turn into Holy Word Serenity, which is a powerful instant cast heal that further increases critical effect of healing spells on the target by 25%. Alternatively, you can enter Chakra Sanctuary by using an AoE heal after pressing Chakra. This increases the healing of AoE spells by 15% and reduces the cooldown of Circle of Healing by 2 seconds. During this state, your Holy Word Chastise also gains a new effect where you can put down an AoE healing field on the ground that will heal all targets within it over 18 seconds. It's knowing how fights play out and where big damage will be incoming to which targets that allow Holy Priest to set up the correct Chakra and to have powerful abilities to fire off. This playstyle is core to Cataclysm's Holy Priest, and it should be something you enjoy though. You also still have Spirit of Redemption of course that allows you to keep healing for 15 seconds after dying, but combat reses are more limited in Kata compared to Wrath, so you can't really play too heavily around this. Serendipity allows you to stack up a buff when using faster heals to make your next big heal better, and Body and Soul is situationally still very useful. It adds a 60% movement speed effect to Power Word Shield for 4 seconds, and also causes cure disease to remove a poison on yourself. A few last talent points here are worth a mention, such as Heavenly Voice. This increases healing done by Divine Hymn by 100% and reduces its cooldown by 5 minutes. Divine Hymn is your big raid-wide cooldown and this allows you to often get more than one off per fight and just have it heal a lot more. Circle of Healing is still there of course and will prioritise the most injured target. And Guardian Spirit is still the final talent tree ability, now improving heals on the target by 60% up from 40% in Wrath, and otherwise works in the same way, as in if the target it's on would have died, they will instead be resurrected with 50% health. Holy Priest will consider Prime Glyphs such as Guardian Spirit, Renew, and Prayer of Healing, depending on whether they need to focus more on raid healing or single targets. Next up is Discipline, a spec which really started to gain a lot of power throughout Wrath of the Lich King, and in Kata is going to still be a mainstay in all raid comps for sure. When you pick Disc, you get Penance, still castable on allies or enemies for healing or for damage, very similar to Wrath. Enlightenment gives you 50 15% bonus intellect, and similar to Holy, you continue to regenerate 50% of mana during combat, and Dispel effects will remove 2 effects on allies. Your mastery is Shield Discipline, which simply makes your shields better. We do still have some talents that buff up shield, such as Improved Power Word Shield, as well as Soul Warding to reduce it down to a 1 second cooldown. The difference is really in the mana cost, it's just too expensive to spam. Evangelism and Archangel give you a stacking buff which can be consumed to restore mana and increase healing for a short time. It also gives you some mini wings as well which look pretty nice. Another big new addition is Atonement. This is where the DPS healer hybrid all began. When you deal damage with Smite or Holy Fire, a nearby target will be healed for 100% of the damage dealt. Do note it only works in a 15 yard range though. Inner Focus has had a mini rework. It now reduces the cost of either Flash, Binding, greater or prayer of healing by 100% and increases their crit chance by 25%, but it's lowered to a 45 second cooldown down from 3 minutes. So no more inner focus divine him, but you still have some good options and you can use it a lot more. Power infusion is unchanged and increases casting speed by 20% and lowers mana cost by 20%. And pain suppression is still your big single target external cooldown, reducing a target's threat by 5% and reducing all damage taken by 40% for 8 seconds. Train of thought is new and makes it so smite reduces the cooldown on penance by 0.5 seconds and 
and greater heal reduces the cooldown on inner focus by 5 seconds. This just keeps your big spells coming off of cooldown more often, so it's a nice pickup. The big new addition for Disc though has to be their final talent, a huge raid wide cooldown that they were definitely missing in Wrath of the Lich King, and that is Power Word Barrier. You summon a barrier at the target location for 10 seconds, and all targets within take 25% or less damage for its duration. I mean, do I need to say anything else? This alone is a reason to bring a Disc Priest for many fights with high spikes of damage. It's an incredibly powerful cooldown to have, and an iconic tool for Disc Priests over the years. Disc would consider Prime Glyphs such as Penance, Power Word Shield, and Barrier. Last but not least for the Priest specs is Shadow, and again it's kind of familiar to Wrath, but there's definitely more than just a few interesting additions here. When you pick Shadow you instantly get Mind Flay. You get 15% bonus Shadow spell damage and 100% bonus crit damage on Shadow spells. It's worth a general mention here too that all periodic effects in Kata scale with Haste and Crit by default, so no need to worry about talents which specify those things being gone from the game. You also get Shadow Orbs, which needs a bit of explaining because it's kind of a wall of text. So Mind Flay and Shadow Word Pain Ticks have a chance to grant a Shadow Orb. You can have three of these at once. When you Mind Blast or Mind Spike, you spend all your stored orbs, and whichever ability you use does 10% bonus damage per orb. For 15 seconds after having spent your orbs, you do 10% more periodic shadow damage. So basically, you do your rotation, you get shadow orbs, you mind blast to spend these orbs, and then you do more periodic damage and just repeat. The periodic damage on this is the big bit of the effect, but it should keep itself running just through natural gameplay without you having to really worry about it. I guess for this mastery, Blizzard wanted to go for something more interesting than just your dots do more damage, so here we are, and your mastery itself will increase the damage of shadow orbs. Simple enough so far, let's look at some talents. Veiled Shadows has been moved up the tree and still reduces the cooldown of Fade and Shadow Fiend. In fact, a bunch of priest specs will end up using this talent. Twisted Faith makes it so Spirit will now be converted into Hit, and can more or less be seen as an interchangeable stat, should you pick up any gear with Spirit on. Shadow Form remains similar to its Wrath version, but now also gives a 5% spell haste buffed your party or raid. Harness Shadows increases the chance to generate shadow orbs and guarantees you get one when critically hit. Self-healing from Vampiric Embrace is nerfed down to 6% for yourself and 3% for other party members. And this is one of the very few party-wide effects left in the game as well. Masochism restores mana when hit by an attack which deals 10% or more of your max health or when damaging yourself with Shadow Word Death. Mind Melt makes it so Mind Spike reduces the cast time of your next Mind Blast by 50%, stacking up to two times, as well as making Shadow of Death do even more damage. Sin and Punishment is new and is a big talent both in PvE and PvP. It causes targets to run in horror when Vampiric Touch is dispelled, and makes it so Mind Flay crits reduce the cooldown on Shadow Fiend. Shadowy Apparitions is another big talent for Shadow Priest too. When your Shadow Web Pain ticks, you have a chance to create a shadowy version of yourself that moves towards the target and deals damage when it reaches them, with a higher proc chance whilst moving. And finally we have Dispersion, which is the same as it is in Wrath, reducing damage taken by 90% and restoring mana. This makes Shadow Priest an amazing candidate for any soaking based mechanics in PvE and is a get out of basically anything free card in PvP, only on a 2 minute cooldown. So how are we expecting the Priest to fare in PvE throughout Cataclysm then? Well in many ways I think it's going to look quite similar to how the meta was in Wrath. Holy Priest I would say does definitely get more powerful but they're in a bit of a strange spot between a hybrid raid and tank healer. And when you're in a raid in World of Warcraft, you kind of just want a spec to be very good at one specific thing. This is why raid comps are a big deal in the first place. And for Holy Priest, there are definitely better options for tank or single target healers. And though their raid healing is more competitive, it can be hard to match up against, say, a Resto Druid, for instance. I do have to say, I doubt people looking to build out meta raid comps will 
often prefer to take holy priests. But depending on encounter difficulty, raid size, and of course player skill, a holy priest should be capable enough in the right player's hands. Discipline is going to be kind of like Wrath in that I expect it to be the most popular healer spec for priests once again. The way disc heals is kind of unique in that they're the only healer that stops damage from ever happening. Every other healer has to restore health bars. When you're a disc priest, they just don't move that much in the first place, and that's kind of an overpowered style of healing. In fact, I think disc actually limited healing design space pretty heavily between Wrath and Warlords of Draenor, because bosses needed to hit hard enough to factor in for the existence of disc priests. But yeah, that's a whole separate topic. It's not only the way that disc heals, but it's that they also pack some incredible utility spells as well, such as power infusion, pain suppression, and of course now, barrier. If you played disc crap wrath of the lich king and you were looking over to paladins with their divine sack which was always such a big deal you know how huge having a raid cooldown can be and when you're all under the barrier being grouped up for a little bit often even isn't a bad thing you can stampeding raw afterwards to reposition and in kata there's a bunch of healing effects which do want people to be stacked such as efflorescence light of dawn healing rain and more and it's worth a mention that atonement is good in kata and you will be using it to heal but it's nowhere near the strongest version of atonement that's ever existed in world of warcraft so you should expect to be using your regular heals in addition to dpsing but yeah discipline is going to remain very popular and for good reason and then we have shadow so shadow so far has been a very good one of spec in your raid since the burning crusade really but it's always just been a one of and i think it's going to continue to do that where things change is that shadow should be more competitive on dps meters typically they're pretty much always middle of the pack but given player skill and especially suitable multi-die encounters i do hope to see them shine at times i don't think you should roll a shadow priest and expect to be topping meters you're gonna need to wait for legion classic and surrender to madness for that but they're still a great pickup for any raid with their unique utility and great damage profile if you've been a shadow priest enjoy throughout classic so far i think you'll like the additions to cataclysm though and would recommend giving it a go. In PvP content, priests continue to perform well as both DPS and healers. In this instance though, Discipline really is the go-to spec due to both their expanded utility pool compared to Holy, but also in their ability to do damage when you're going all in. Some notable talent inclusions here are Strength of Soul, which makes you immune to interrupt, silence, and dispel effects for 5 seconds after having used in a focus, which is amazing for those moments when you yourself are getting focused. Remember, in a focus now is a 45 second cooldown, so this is going to be up pretty often. Focus Will also changes a bit compared to Wrath, but it has the same idea behind the talent. Whenever you take over 10% of your total health or are crit by any direct attack, you gain 10% damage reduction stacking twice and when people start hitting you this stacks up kind of instantly priests are also definitely a healer that can go on the offensive with smite mind blast holy fire shadow of death shadow fiend penance and of course evangelism to add even more damage you've got leap of faith which can come in super clutch to remove somebody from an all-in and priests still have tons of other utilities such as dispel mass dispel mana burn and the list just goes on and on this spec is is really good and it's like an extension of the wrath of the lich king discipline with just even more tools to play with shadow also sees improvements and has some huge new talents to really push it to the next level sin and punishment has to be the biggest one you finally having some dispel protection on your vampiric touch is such a big deal and it makes both of the dispeller and nearby targets run in horror for three seconds that makes it into a serious threat and being shadow you still of course have things such as silence and silence psychic horror for more cc you've got talents such as harness shadows and masochism that even give you bonuses for moments when you're being focused and you can't cast as much as normal such as restoring mana and granting shadow orbs and of course you take dark evangelism over in the discipline tree as an all-in tool and an offensive cooldown which typically shadow isn't really known for having shadow should see widespread play across a bunch of comps or at least i know it did back in the day perhaps things 
things will be different on final patch balancing. Either way, Shadow Priest for PvP and Kata should be a good time. Next up, we have our tier set, starting with the Mercurial set from tier 11, that being Throne of the Four Winds, Blackwing Descent, and Bastion of Twilight. This tier set gives a bit of a twisted, almost Twilight Hammer type vibe, but I guess that's pretty fitting going into Cataclysm. The two set increases the crit chance of Mind Flay and Mind Seer by 5%, which is a fine enough bonus, albeit not terribly exciting. The four set increases damage of Shadowy Apparitions by 10%, so it's increasing their damage a bit. It depends what type of encounter you're doing as for how much impact they will have, but it's adding a bit of damage to you nevertheless. For healers, the two set increases the crit chance of heal by 5%. Both priest healers will be using this as their go-to slow and efficient heal. Discipline also loves crit thanks to Divine Aegis converting 30% of crits on heals into a shield, which scales with their mastery too. The four set basically reads you have 540 extra spirit all of the time, whichever healer spec you're playing. And spirit is now a pure healer stat which regenerates mana, so more spirit equals more mana and more heals. Tier 12 is the Cleansing Flame from the Firelands, a zealous sounding set for the priests in this one. I have to say they've done this style of face guard on a few different tiers over the years and I always reckon it's an easy hide helm for me. Apart from that, looks alright. For DPS, the two set reduces the cooldown on Shadow Fiend by 75 seconds and causes it to do 20% extra damage as fire. So with Shadow Fiend talented and this two set, you're already down to a 2 minute 45 second cooldown down Shadow Fiend, and when Mind Flay crits, you reduce this by a further 10 seconds each time. So that's gonna mean a lot more Shadow Fiending. The four set makes it so when all three of your main dots are active on the target, your Mind Blast does 25% more damage. This should always be active when you're DPSing a primary target, and it's just a bit of extra damage in your rotation. It seems like a solid tier set for the Shadow Priests. For healers, casting a number of spells causes you to regenerate 2% of your base mana every 5 seconds for 15 seconds. This should math out to about 411 mana a tick, and with some of the fights being on the longer side in Firelands, this bonus will add up over time, especially when you can maintain it pretty easily through standard play. The force that makes it so in casting a helpful spell, you have a chance to summon a flame that will heal a near injured party member. So I went and checked on Wowhead and it reckons this has a 5% proc chance with no internal cooldown. And all things considered, this seems like a very powerful force set bonus. Finally, the Dying Light set from Dragon Soul, which looks like something you'd see in a FromSoft game to be honest. The DPS 2 set makes Shadow Word Death deal 55% more damage, and it reduces the damage you take from it by 95%. This sounds pretty amazing, but Dragon Soul tier sets just tend to be that good. The 4 set makes it so Shadow Fiend and Shadowy Apparitions have a 100% chance to grant you 3 Shadow Orbs each time they deal damage. In practice, this will mean your Mind Blast is always getting the maximum possible bonus out of Shadow Orbs. The 2 set for healers makes it so after using Power Infusion or Divine Him, the cost of healing spells is reduced by 25% for 23 seconds. That's a huge discount for your heals for a very long time. And Discipline gets to benefit from both of these back to back if they want to, because Disc still has Divine Him, it's a baseline ability, not wholly exclusive, whereas Holy cannot get Power Infusion. The 4 set makes Power Word Shield have a 10% chance to absorb 100 more damage, and increases the mana granted by the Rapture Talent by 100%. It also increases the duration of Holy Word abilities by 33%. So again, Discipline gets the better end of this deal. 33% extra duration on Sanctuary is nice and all, but this is just so much extra healing and mana for Discipline. And that is really everything I have for the Priest in Cataclysm. As it stands, I think Holy Priest is a bit of an underdog spec, and I want to see if people can make it work, and if there end up being any fights where it's legitimately a good choice over discipline. I think the chakra gameplay is a lot of fun and you just have so many healing buttons to press that it feels really rewarding when you get it right. Discipline still has lots of emphasis on absorbing damage, but now also has the damage dealing aspect to it as well, so you're going to be making the most of your full toolkit as a healer. There's a lot more to this spec than just spamming power word shield now, that's for sure. If you do that, you're going to be going pretty fast. Shadow's gameplay is also 
looking to be pretty amazing. You now have a mini cooldown in Dark Evangelism, something to do direct damage with from Mind Spike, and even just nice quality of life things such as being able to mind sear the tank. But let me know what you think, whether there's anything big that you'd add here to the video, and whether you're considering the Priest for Cataclysm Classic in the comments down below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in, and I'll see you on the next one very soon.